Serious drug dealers of Reddit, have you ever called CPS on a client? If so, what's the story? I pulled up to this woman's house, I was 19 at the time. She was a regular and often asked if I had any coke, I was strictly a marijuana dealer. When I walked into her house, she had two babies, twins. Female dealer here, when I asked to use the bathroom, she said she didn't have running water due to money issues. There was a 5 gallon bucket in the bathroom, to pee and poop in. This bucket was extremely full. Not to mention the overflowing trash cans, and tied off trash bags in the living room. I couldn't believe how gross her house was. I panicked. I called CPS, and told them I was a family friend. I drove my car down the road a little, and waited for the cops to show up. I watched them pull the woman out to the house in cuffs. She turned out to have heroin in her house. I still wonder about those twins today. Not sure if this counts, but in the late 1990s, I used to sell reefer part time while I was in college. One of my regular customers turned his sister on to me. She called for a delivery. No big deal. I went there one time. She had three little kids. Like a couple toddlers and an infant. Her house was full of cockroaches. I was disgusted. I called CPS. Not because of the drugs and babies, but because of how fucking filthy that house was. It caused a lot of problems for her and her boyfriend. They were in the system for a long time. Not sure how it all turned out. But, fuck that woman. I used to sell weed, X, and K around 20 years back, and I had a regular that would come to see me like clockwork every weekend. He seemed like an okay guy, excluding the drugs of course, but I can't really criticize here because I was a dealer, and after a while his pickups turned into 5 minute chats and then to 30 minute stays. During a convo he let slip that he had a son, a toddler, and that he looked after him every weekend, and that when he was at my joint picking up his kid was in the car the kid was in the back seat, he had a high ace minivan windowless the whole time. And not only that, but because he didn't want to share his single bed with his kid and risk getting it urinated and he made his kid sleep in the van outside. But it's okay. Because it was locked and parked in the backyard, so the kid was safe. As soon as he let it slip, he was done as a customer. I told him to get foe and never come back on the threat of a severe beating. He threatened to rat me to the cops. I told him that my suppliers saw me as a decent source of income and wouldn't take it very well. He left. It rocked me so hard I felt almost concussed. I honestly couldn't process how sterile and casual he was about it all. And I knew I had to tell CPS. So I called anonymously and said I lived on his street and could hear the kid crying from the van at night every weekend and that I had seen him incoherent and smelling of weed during the day. I never saw him again and I don't know what happened to either him or his son but it has stuck with me all this time and I feel responsible for his actions in part because he did these things in pursuit of his drugs. I eventually stopped dealing and got my shit together and the way I felt about this and the realization that my actions affected people far further from me than I though was a huge part of it. Nothing changes the fact that I contributed to that child's neglect and abuse though. Willingly or not, it makes no difference and it's only one of the shitty ugly things I've done that I have to live with. So, I'm only posting because I have been clean and sober for three and a half years now and anything I say I have already been convicted for and I've officially finished all of my legal issues. I have never officially called child and family services but I had this one mother who used to constantly call me for meth. And I had never been to her house before, I was a bit of a sketch bag and didn't trust anybody, but after a few months I built a relationship with her where I felt at ease going to her house. When I went to go drop some off, it was child tax day, I never knew she was a mother, normally not an issue for me, I could not care less, I walked into the house and the smell was un believable, cigarettes, sweat, shit and piss. There was broken glass on the floor 12 inch burn circles on the floor, poop on the floors. The TV was smashed, the bathroom door was literally torn off, and in the hallway. I have seen a little toddler that was walking around with no diaper on, he had his own poop all over him, he was so malnourished he was grey. 
the mother came to give me her money and I took the bag of meth I had put it in my pocket and I told her to buy some diapers for her kid. I told her that she would have to find her dope somewhere else and walked away. A good friend of mine who had always tried to help me out was a social worker and I told her who she was and where she lived and gave her some details so she could make a final decision. I'll always remember that kid. The last I heard he had been taken away and the mother was in jail. I wish him the best of luck in this cruel world. So it wasn't me, but I have a feeling it was the downstairs neighbor. When I was little I lived with my mom, who for the last half decade was blowing up kitchens in San Antonio with my dad cooking meth in this two-story apartment. My dad had skipped out on us, and it was my mom, little sister, and me. Often when my mom would like to get high she'd lock us in my room where we'd sleep on the floor and watch VHS movies on this old box TV, so that way she could go smoke meth in peace. Well my mom and my aunt would often smoke together, and leave us, and my cousin unattended, and I guess the guys, that would give me food downstairs, when my mom wouldn't got sick of it, and called the cops, because one day we were locked in our room watching TV when out of nowhere these guys bust in, and we hear screaming, they come into our room and we see our moms, in handcuffs along with everyone else there as the cops come in, and take each of us out. I did many years ago. When I pushed, I did not deal in hard drugs but only THC, MDMA, psychedelics. While I was at this woman's house, because she was not only a client, but also a girlfriend of one of my best friends, so I was there often enough to see him. I consistently found myself and anyone else at the house, left alone with the child, it seemed if anyone showed up, she would sneak out. Come to find out she was doing methadone with the upstairs neighbors, and who the hell knows what else. I hate to know who that child was ever left alone with. She had been an on again off again drug addict, pills, heroin, methy CT. Many times I witnessed that she would watch her toddler put cigarettes in her mouth from the ground. Which I would take away from the baby, and she would laugh and say that it's not a big deal. I rode in her car a few times. I was a smoker at that time as well as her. I would get out of the car to light up and she would tell me that I could smoke in the car, but I refused because of the child in the back seat. When I was around I would try my best to kind of steer her away from the child when she wanted to have a cigarette. It is something very specific that began to steer me clear of any tobacco use. She had a bug problem in her house and she would spray bug killer on every single one of her daughter's toys to keep the bugs off of them. I explained to her that her baby chews on her toys and bug killer can seriously harm her and she again told me that it's not a big deal she has seen her baby put worse things in her mouth and that it will toughen her up. I had enough. I'm the oldest of 9 kids and I now need for several families for over a decade aside from mothering my own siblings. I know that a child can handle a lot but there are so many things that she was doing that kept ringing off the danger bells in my head. I knew that if that child got sick or even died because of her carelessness, I would feel directly responsible for not doing anything about it. If you see something, say something, especially when it involves a child. My goal was not to have her child taken from her, but for someone with authority to keep tabs on the child. I could not stand to be around her anymore, and it is within my nature to take on a caretaker role, but that relationship I had with those people were seriously damaging my mental state, I had nothing but fear and sorrow for that little girl. I lost a best friend by doing this, but the kid was worth more than a friend who could not see what his woman doing right in front of him. Where they are now is even more sad, but I can't bring myself to dive into that. Twice. Left anonymous tips, which I know, are hard to follow up for such a strange child protection agency, but as a pot dealer it was all I felt I could do. I found out later that one of the kids were put into foster care, adopted by the foster parents, and recently graduated a trade school. I have no idea about the other kids, siblings, but I hope they made it too. Kids should be protected. Humans only get one childhood. Let's let kids enjoy it and grow to happy adults. Don't hurt them intentionally or by your own stupidity. 
A friend of my girlfriend introduced us to her neighbors who were like 50 to 60 year old hippies that looked like a bad acid trip but bought weed regularly for full price. Couple months down the road they start being more friendly with my girlfriend and I and start talking more when we'd go drop off the shit. The topic began with her telling us how she has custody of her daughter's oldest born because her daughter was sitting time at a women's prison. Backstory on the kid, looks 15 but clearly has the mind capacity of a 6 or 7 year old, not sure what was wrong with her specifically, but you could tell there were issues. Near the end of the conversation about her daughter she brought up the fact that her granddaughter was prescribed Adderall 30XR, and whenever they got her prescription they'd dump all the little beads into a bowl to use, whenever they couldn't find meth, or whatever they needed, and instead fill the Adderall with Benadryl to make the kid sleep. Till this day I'll never forget the emotions I felt after getting out of there and sitting in my car. My hands were shaking so bad it was hard to google information about CPS, much less type information in. I felt goosebumps in every pore of my scalp. As a father of two I never knew such evil existed. Obviously in movies and shit, but never experienced something first hand like that.